of Western Canada voted to have dual marketing, the same marketing freedom as grain farmers in the rest of the country. That is what we are defending. And that's why, by the way, we have virtually every seat among rural Western farmers. They want the right to be able to market their own products while maintaining a strong Canadian wheat board. And that's what we're trying to give them. That was Stephen Harper at the 2008 leadership debate, promising to give growers, farmers, a choice to cut the Canadian wheat board down to size, a move most Canadian economists would tell you means lower prices at the grocery counter. Agriculture Minister Jerry Ritz gave us a little tease after the election last week. The Canadian wheat board can survive the loss of its monopoly to buy and sell Western Canada's wheat and barley as an optional grain marketer in an open system. So the question becomes, where does this all stand and how does this impact on the average Canadian. It's something you need to know. Rolf Penner is a farmer and Manitoba VP at the Western Canadian Wheat Growers Association and Cam Dahl is a research associate at the Frontier Centre for Public Policy, a think tank. Mr. Penner, let me begin with you. Uh, over the last uh, couple of days, we've been doing uh, several stories on various uh, marketing boards, and one of the central questions we're asking is, uh, when does the conservative government do the, the conservative thing and allow more and more free trade, uh, whether it's uh, the opportunity for people to buy eggs from egg farmers without egg marketing boards, whether it's uh, wheat farmers like yourself being able to sell wheat uh, without uh, interference from, from the wheat board. I wonder if you could just uh, start with the... The, the political answer, do you have expectations that the Conservative government, especially now with the majority, will lessen the power of the Wheat Board? Absolutely. They've been talking about it uh, for a long time. They've, it's been a part of the party platform for many elections now. Um, the excuse before has always been there's been a minority government, they're in a minority si situation, they can't really move ahead. Well, now that final roadblock is gone. and. If they need to make legislative change, which is what I think they need to do, they're certainly in a position to be able to do it. And there's a lot of Western farmers, myself included, that would like to see some action very, very quickly. I can't help but notice that um, you have brought me a cup of wheat. I did. Okay. Here's my question. Is it... <laughs> People will think this is a crazy question, but hang with me, folks. Humor me. Is it illegal for you to sell me this cup of wheat? It is, actually. If you were to give me $5 for that cup of wheat, we would be engaging in an illegal activity. Um, one of the things that this is, is the Harper government is looking at actually decriminalizing the sale of wheat. Um, I can't just sell this wheat to anybody. I would love to be able to sell uh, this wheat to you or to Cam or to you know, any one of a number of customers around the world. But right now, I'm forced to go through this Canadian Wheat Board. And the Canadian Wheat Board sells this grain on my behalf, and I basically am stuck with whatever returns I get. And I'm not happy with that, and a lot of farmers aren't happy with that. So you can gift me this, you can give it to me. I can. But if I give you $20 for it, uh, both of us are committing an illegal transaction? Technically, yes. I don't think anybody's, you know, I don't think the SWAT team is waiting outside okay. the door, but technically... Uh, I don't, want to make a, I don't want to make a criminal out of you. We've got enough. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but let me go, let me go to Mr. Mr. Think Tank here, Cam Dahl. You've been researching this uh, for quite a while. Uh, uh, let me ask you to give the devil his due, as it were. There must have been a point to all this at some time. What, what, what point was there? We, we, why did we have one? Why do we have one? I, I think it, it came into, into being um, in, in the period uh, immediately following the First World War, I, I believe. Um, and it was in order to ensure supply um, and to ensure that uh, the United Kingdom and its allies had, had a sure supply of wheat. And that was the original purpose of, of the, the Canadian Wheat Board when it came into being. What's, this, what's, what's the point now, sir? I, I think the point has long passed. And, and there might have been a time when uh, farmers weren't as sophisticated marketers as they are today. But uh, farmers today are, are extremely sophisticated marketers. A farmer like Ralph is, is running a multi-million dollar operation. Um, he's marketing his canola, he's marketing his oats, he's marketing everything else. Um, he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of decisions on, on a daily basis. Ralph's capable of, of, of marketing his, his own wheat and barley. Well then, Ralph, let me ask you, and by the way, uh, I didn't know you were so wealthy, I would have, <laughs> wouldn't, have, wouldn't have offered you 20, but all, all kidding aside, um, if you're doing very well, you've got this multi-million dollar operation, 
What's the problem? The problem is, is we cannot get away from wheat. I mean, people have talked about it before saying, you know what, if you don't like the wheat board system, grow something else. Unfortunately, where we live in Canada, we're on the northern edge of where you can grow things in the world. And we're very limited as to the number of crops that we can grow. One of the crops that's actually fairly easy to grow is wheat. That's one of the reasons they chose wheat. Um, you know, canola is a great crop, oats is a great crop, but you know, wheat is an even better crop and it's a far more stable crop. All right, so you're a sophisticated marketer, you're not like the farmers of old, and you've got the computers, you've got the techniques, you've also got the, the gift of the gab, I might say. <laughs> what would you be, how would you be doing your business differently? And in terms of the people who really matter to me, citizens of Adam Nation, what would our benefit be if the wheat board was down and you were doing business with us differently? How would we notice? Well, I, I think the biggest benefit to the general public would be, you talk about what goes on at the grocery stores. I don't think you'd see that big a change in what goes on in the grocery stores. But I think what you'd probably see is guys like me selling directly to processors, uh, whether that be flour mills or pasta plants or uh, the malting industry. Uh, Western Canada is really set to be the malting capital of North America. And quite frankly, there's nothing more Canadian than beer. And I mean, malting would be a, a great fit. Okay. Are, are you saying that we're not getting uh, enough productivity in the economy? We're not getting enough value added stuff, whether it's malting or pasta plants, or whatever, because the wheat board is getting in the way of that? Absolutely. So let, let's yeah. talk about that because that's, that's, that's economics that everyone can understand. We'd Absolutely. have a larger revenue base, we'd have a more productive economy, more people working. You're telling me the wheat board stands in the way of all of that. Yeah. And, and there's a really good example of that. Uh, a few years ago, a number of farmers in Saskatchewan wanted to get together and, and process their own durum wheat to make their own pasta in Saskatchewan. Instead of that plant being built in Saskatchewan where it should have been built, um, it was built in North Dakota. It was a North Dakota pasta growers. A group of farmers got together. Um, it's now one of the most successful pasta processors in the world. Well, this uh, is silly. That means that we, we're staying with the old-fashioned hewers of wood, drawers Absolutely. of water. Is that the right cliche? Yes. And uh, so we're, we're shipping the stuff out. We've got nothing against our American neighbors, but there's nothing about pasta that we don't know how to do. Absolutely. Or, or, or malting beer. Or mal malting barley or making flour or making bread. All right. Now, uh, Rolf, uh, they've had referenda on this kind of thing, and many farmers, of course, vote for the wheat board. Why, why do some farmers vote for it in, in 20 seconds or less? Well, there's a number of different reasons. Uh, some farmers uh, just like the idea of having somebody else uh, sell their grain for them. It uh, reduces that burden. They don't have to make the phone calls. They don't have to look for the best price. They kind of like that. They're paying a heavy cost for that, and I think a lot of them don't realize the cost that they're paying, but some like that. You know, it's, it's a bit of a security blanket. Um, I think of it more of a wet blanket, but uh, some farmers think of it as a security blanket. Um, others like this idea that everybody kind of gets the same price. Um, you know, if you're a bigger guy versus a smaller guy, the bigger guy might be able to get an extra nickel. Uh, usually it's a lot more about timing than it is about size. Hey, bottom line is the path of least resistance just to have someone else do it for you. Yeah, it is. Yep. Ralph Penner, thank you so much. Thank you. Cam, thank you. Pleasure as well. to be here. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, folks, I want to hear from you on this topic or any other. They're all important. Be a citizen of Adler Nation. Send me an email, charlesadler at sunmedia.ca. We read them all. Your opinions are extremely important to us. Now, Charlie Sheen's tiger blood must be boiling.